Welcome, my friends, to this new series of videos entitled British or American. And the title clearly indicates we will be discussing the differences between standard British English, known as received pronunciation, RP, and a standard American English, known as general American, GA. And the first area to investigate is roticity, my friends. Now, what do we mean by roticity? Roticity in English is the pronunciation of the historical rotic consonant ra by English speakers. So, when the consonant ra is pronounced in a dialect, we call it rotic. And when it's not pronounced, we call it non-rotic. Lovely. So, some English dialects are rotic, like the ones of Southwest England, Scotland, Ireland, and most of the United States and Canada. Uh, Non-rotic dialects are like those of England, Wales, Australia, New Zealand, and South Africa. Hmm. And in this program, the focus will be on British English and American English. And when we say British English in this program, we actually refer to the RP which is received pronunciation, or Queen's English, or standard English, as some people may call it. And we will compare it with the general American, GA, American English, the, the, the dialect spoken by most educated Americans. And what is so funny um, is that in British English, the RP is related to the South, and in American English, the GA is related to the West. Mm. Lovely, lovely. So, the first difference we're discussing between RP and GA, as I said before, is roticity. Hmm. RP is non-rotic, while GA is rotic. But was this the scenario throughout the history of English language? And the answer is no. At the time of Shakespeare, English language was rotic. In other words, Shakespeare pronounces R's. So, um, when you read Sonnet 18 by William Shakespeare, um, the first line would sound like this. Hmm. Shall I compare there to a summer's day? So, the R is in both compare and summer. And the R is pronounced. So, what happened? What has changed the nature of British English. And let's say that after the Industrial Revolution in England, the royal family and the upper class started dropping the R's and some other people started copying this pronunciation to appear prestigious. Now the question is, are there rules for dropping the rat sound in British English? And the answer is yes, of course. So first rule is drop it when it is at the end of a word, followed by a pause. For example, the words here, better, car, door. And of course, this doesn't happen in American English where you would normally say here, better, car, door. So let's see some examples from British English. Let's go. No good explanation for any of that yet, but boy, are we glad she's here. You can come no matter what your interests are, and you'll just be accepted. Lucy is different when she's here. She can be herself and not worry about it. I would film myself opening my next lot of parcels, because every time she is here, I get a delivery. But you've got, what you've got is experience on your side now. So, you know, I think there is some opportunities here to turn this into something that is better. You know, I could see if you carried on, you'd probably have the whole lot in. Yeah. Let's recompose the shot and take a look. Oh, I can see straight away, that is better. That is much better. Uh, it was a bigger improvement wow. in that time than they'd made yeah. in the entire 10 yeah. previous years of, yeah. of, of work. So the, yeah. the, the speed that machine learning is, just, is getting better yeah. is incredible. And so I think the, that's the big story. Yeah. Everything else comes from that because what that means is the results are going to get better. Yeah. So if you have a container, you know, you can, it's like getting in your car. This is my car and I'm going to drive around and show you off my car. 
In this video, I'll answer the question, what happens to my gap insurance if I change my car? What's so spectacularly clever about my car is that it can harness that dissipating energy. One thing was clear from the start, that we would have black allegiance to the cunning as the first work that visitors see when they open the door. One of Beethoven's biographers would later call this pattern the fate motif because it suggests the figure of fate knocking at the door. Of chapters, and there's only like a few chapters at the end where Harry, Ron and Hermione like play the chess game, go through, find the key, get through the door, he sees Voldemort, tries to get the stone from Voldemort and like talks to him. Now let's see how these words are pronounced in American English. I haven't quite made the decision, it's like quite bad enough for them to make that trek. We'll also think it's better there than it is here. So we may see even more people coming out of eastern Syria. We've already seen that surveillance has become a, a de facto part of our lives in an unexpected way. We never foresaw that it would look quite like this, but it is here. Uh, this is the NSA data center for people who aren't familiar with it. This building, and do you wish more than ever that America had one, or is it unique to here? You sure I wish we had one. I don't know if it's the, the theater is as, is as built into our DNA as it is here. It is both the corridor to all that is better and the last corner we turn. Will we use these choices to make a society that is better, that is more successful, that is kinder? Or will we selectively choose different attributes that we want for some of us and not for others of us? But don't allow it to lock you in. If you see something over to the side that is better or is more interesting or is something that you literally just could not have predicted because you couldn't have even seen it until you reached the halfway point in your march toward that new thing, then feel free to veer off and go do that. So Grant, this is from me to you. <laughs> That's awesome. There's two of them. One's on my car and one's in your hands. Oh man, thank you. Please keep that in pride. And um, she lived in this neighborhood that had sort of like, it had like a neighborhood pool. And we used to sit at this neighborhood pool and I would open the trunk of my car and we would just sit there and talk. And one time I opened it and I had my acoustic guitar and I was like, hey, I wanna play you this song. There's a gift in between these blankets for you. So I took the blankets and went back to my car. I lifted up the first blanket and there was a blouse and a dress. I don't know about you guys, but I have memories from when I was a kid riding in the back seat of my car, parents driving me on the freeway. With body language, here's what you gotta do. You really gotta just throw your assumptions out the door. Let the science temper your knowledge a little bit. Because we think liars fidget all the time. Well, guess what? They're known to freeze their upper bodies when they're lying. Hi, Drew, I'm Mark Malnati from Lou Malnati's Pizzeria in Chicago. In 1971, my parents opened a little pizzeria and we had lines out the door, around the corner, down the block. Last year, we shipped over two million pizzas hanging up their coats and taking off their shoes a little bit further away from the door. So everyone can get in, you can close the door, save the heating or the air conditioning and get that space cleared out a little bit so people aren't shuffling through. And dismiss even uh, dishonorable deeds with, I'm just doing my job. What, did you check your mind at the door? Did you check your conscience at the door? Another rule is, when a word ends in the letter R, and followed by a vowel without a pause, the R is pronounced in British English. So let's see how the pronunciation of the previous words will change an RP when they're followed by vowels. Let's go. And the premise is what would happen if we took like the hands-on science museum, like the Exploratorium okay. here in San Francisco. Sure. Right, with all the sort of kinetic exhibits that kids get to monkey with and learn about, uh -huh. bigger forces. Hess is uh, perhaps best known for her arrangements of Bach for the piano and for performances that she gave here in the National Gallery during the Second World War. I'm always telling the maids that to work well in a kitchen, you need to have good instincts, good ingredients, good recipes and the right equipment. Here in the kitchens at Audley End House, we have a lot of copper and it all has different uses. And all we're really preserving here in Ramphasuchus is this sort of front half of the snout to give you some idea of how large this actual specimen really is. I think the big challenge they're going to face is actually to do better at this, they have to disappoint their users. 
Um, I think that uh, there, the media could be better at explaining when things change on impacts in particular is really difficult at the moment. For Miss Bellis, and looking at that, the focus that she had in her sport, they not only encouraged me to play more sport and get better at the sport I was playing, I think is something that, that for me today still, still really rings true. Toxic plant are not dying afterwards when they could have eaten literally any other food and done considerably better at being animals. With asking machines to preside over cases, um, in, in, that humans are better at coping with, or are more capable of being flexible with. Claimed curb weight is just over two tonnes, which is lighter than before. It also uses ZF's amazing 8-speed auto, and this car is fitted with the dynamic pack which gives steel springs and adjustable dampers and raises the top speed to 174 miles an hour. So an electric car is not a great thing in itself. If it's part of an overall systemic package, if we can think of it as a whole, if it's the transport end of an energy policy, and that all holds together, then it's a great thing. So this is the fourth attempt. I don't know how many I'm going to include in the edit, but once again, look, you can't, the car is locked. That is proof. Uh, let's press play on here, see what happens. The furthest point by car is a place called Caves of Hades. There isn't much to see here as it's quite barren, but there are some lovely inlets to settle down for some swimming or snorkeling. Similarly, if you wanted to send some money, a contribution to a cause that you cared about, had to get into the bottom drawer of your, of your desk, grab your checkbook, write the check, put it in an envelope, stamp it, put it in a post box and hope that it gets there. It has to be absolutely convenient. That's me going into the pub. I touch my, all, all, the, all the device on the door of the pub is allowed, is, is this person over 18 and not barred from the pub. And the cat has a, a suicide cyanide pill with him. And um, if you open the door of the fridge, the cat definitely dies. But if you leave the court door shut, you can't tell whether the cat is alive or dead. And I remember going the first time and, and knocking on the door of Talent House and saying, I'm terribly sorry to bother you, but uh, I've come to look at this house because Virginia Woolf spent her childhood here. Now, another rule, when the letter R is followed by a consonant, it's not pronounced. So in British English, words like farm, born, heard, weird, all the R's disappear, but this is not the same scenario in American English, where you say farm, born, hurt, weird. So let's see some examples from British native speakers. Some countries are working on ways to connect electric grids across the globe, and many farms store energy in massive batteries or convert their electricity into clean gas that can be used later. They need to be kept cool and moist, as well as get enough oxygen to survive the journey, all of which increases the cost to distribute them. A commercial lobster farm could help reduce costs, but it's very difficult to successfully farm American or European lobsters. So if an elephant tries to enter the farm, he will avoid the beehive at all costs, but he might try and push through between the hive and the dummy hive, causing all the beehives to swing as the wire hits his chest. Her mission was to provide decent health care for everyone. Now, Nightingale was born into a rather grand, very wealthy British family who are horrified when she volunteered to work in military hospitals during the Crimean War. The Scots thought eels started out life as beetles, and the English were convinced they were born when hairs from horse tails fell into river water. Karen Keegan, meanwhile, acquired her second genome before she was born. Very early in her own mother's pregnancy with her, Keegan had a fraternal twin. Hello. My name is Michael Kane. I've just had a vaccine for COVID. It didn't hurt. Not many people know that. Thankfully, President Kennedy got wind of the crackpot scheme and put a stop to it before anyone could get hurt. This doesn't necessarily mean you need to make them laugh or cry, though actually it wouldn't hurt. Or not really relevant to them, or it might be a bit too weird. Well, sleeve, I guess. We've mostly been covering freshwater eels in this video, but eels don't get any less weird no matter which bit of the family tree you're looking at. I'm going into my sixth year in Oxford now, which is just ridiculous. I know, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Nothing compares to the thrill of conducting your own research, setting up something all week and then seeing the result physically with things that have actually grown or done something weird you've come up with it it's your like brain baby now let's see 
how the very same words are uttered in American English. Let's go. By saying, I'm not going to quit, I'm going home. You have to understand that for me, going home did not mean returning to my family's farm. For me, going home meant returning to the work of writing because writing was my home. The specific microbes present depend on the environment. For example, in grasslands and farm fields, there tend to be more bacteria, which excel at breaking down grass and leaves. Uh, next uh, speaker will be Joel Salatin, who is a farmer, lecturer, and author, whose books include You Can Farm and Salad Bar Beef. Salatin raises livestock using holistic method methods of animal husbandry, free of potentially harmful chemicals, on his farm in Virginia. His farm is featured in the book The Omnivore's Dilemma and the documentary film Food, Inc. Please welcome Joel Salatin. It's interesting that I'm here in Luxembourg because my grandmother was born not too far from here in Berlin, Germany. She's 96 years old, by the way, and she said, Ty, Tell him hello. So hello from my 96-year-old grandma. And Stroman, who belonged to that other wounded country, despite being born with the privilege of a native white man. I realized these men's stories formed an urgent parable about America. And finally, let's bestow credit in a very generous way. So I don't know if you've ever looked at the credits of a Pixar movie, but the babies born during a production are listed there. Because otherwise, we are mixing up uh, a lot of the uh, concerns about immigration in a way that will, I think, hurt both uh, the uh, side of immigration about people who fill jobs we, we need, particularly high-value jobs, and the people who are here living in fear because somebody's going to come around, round them up, and deport them. So. And these radical proposals would begin to dismantle the VA healthcare system that millions of veterans depend on every day. And that would hurt veterans. I can still remember the screams of all the imaginary people, please help me! And I, but don't worry, you know, no one was hurt. Because at just the last moment before their part of the crumbling city fell into the churning waters, well, I imagined lifting them all up to safety. Our audiences are evolving, but I feel like it's becoming less and less awkward. I mean, I've certainly played super awkward concerts and I've put myself in all kinds of weird situations, but I feel like you always kind of learn something from those and you get something out of it. Suit. I got a suit out of the closet. It wasn't mine. It was too big. It looked weird on me. God help me. I don't know what I looked like when I showed up at that guy's house, but I use so. So like everything else in life that's worthwhile, it's gonna require some time and some work on your part. So, you know, if you're in a weird state right now, if you're dealing with a tragedy or something that was really bad for you, uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, uh, anything, a divorce, an end, something that really rocked your world, these could be the most important questions you could ever ask. Now this difference in roticity between British English and American English resulted in a difference in diphthongs between the two dialects. So RP has three more diphthongs than those in GA. So in American English, for example, there are no schwa rendered diphthongs. Someone may ask, what do you mean by schwa rendered diphthongs? And I actually mean these three sounds, ear, like in the word hear, air, like in the word hair, ua, like in the word cure. And of course, because American English is a rotted dialect, so these words are pronounced as hear, hair, and cure. Let's listen first to these words from British speakers. Let's go. And he sat down and I said, so is it true that you faked your way in here? And he said, yep, yep, absolutely. I beat someone up when I was 17. Orazio Gentileschi, Artemisia's father, was asked to do a job with another painter, Agostino Tassi. And it was here, in the family home on Via della Croce, when Artemisia was working on a painting in her father's studio. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the National Gallery. My name is Priyash Mistry, and I'm the Associate Curator for Modern and Contemporary Projects here. Um, I'm absolutely delighted to be speaking to you today from Room 30. And as you rest here, imagining the lake on other days, still days when the lake is calm and polished like a mirror. That what she did to Agostino to try and stop him uh -huh. is she, she scratched his face, she yeah. pulled his hair. Dido also wore a silk and gold beaded turban wound around her hair. 
The waves of fluid move the basilar membrane, a tissue lined with tens of thousands of hair cells. The bright flowers capture attention, standing out against the subtle colours around them, against the patterns and textures of different fabrics, of wicker baskets and petals, skin and hair painted with soft contours and blended tones. ...argue that not using genetic modification is unethical because it condemns children to preventable suffering and death and denies them the cure. What we are all about with Parkinson's UK to make everybody's life better, the cure will follow as a natural progression, hopefully. And lastly, don't think you can cure homesickness at home. It does just make it more painful coming back. One way of thinking about this is to do a thought experiment. Let's suppose we cure the greenhouse gas emissions from all of the economy apart from food. Now the same words, but from American speakers. Let's go. I mean, the word women, the word gender is about women. Actually, I'm even here speaking as a middle-class white man. Before the first stroke, standing on the rocks at Marina Hemingway, the Cuban flag is flying above, all my teams out in their boats, hands up in the air. We're here. We're here for you. And here I want to thank veterans across our country for being part of another mission. My national security advisor is with us here today. There's a reason why our USAID administrator, Gail Smith, that she of the spectacular hair, sits... <laughs> um, The silk is a hundred times thinner than human hair. Humans probably lost their fur coats, their thick body hair, because it didn't really help us hunting and running around sweating on the savanna. Very, very small. As reference, your hair is 50 microns, so this is 0.3, it's a fraction of your hair. When it was ravaging Europe, they brought together all these scientists and they were stumped. And the beginnings of the cure to the disease came from the most unlikely source, a dairy farmer. A dairy farmer who noticed that the milkmaids were not getting smallpox. That needs to be solved, and so people try to solve it by connecting. But here, connection is more like a symptom than a cure. It expresses, but it doesn't solve an underlying problem. In this video, I'm talking about the most recent clinical trial news about frequency therapeutics and why their FX322 drug may not be the cure for hearing loss after all. So my friends, thank you for watching this first episode of British or American. And do not forget to subscribe to the channel, like this video, leave a comment and share with as many people as you can. This was Shadi Abusa from British Training Center, and bye-bye for now.